The best way to develop your AI skills is by building projects. However, sometimes figuring out what to build is the hardest part of getting started. In this video, I'll share five AI projects that you can build with Python fast. I'll break down the steps and Python libraries for implementing each idea. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Shah. I make videos about data science and entrepreneurship. And if you enjoy this content, please consider clicking the subscribe button. That's a great no-cost way you can support me in all the videos that I make. The number one mistake people make when thinking of project ideas is they start with the question, how can I use this new technology? While this can be a fine way to learn a new tool, there is a better way. Good projects start with a different question. What problem can I solve? This not only makes for a better story when sharing with potential employers, but solving problems is how you translate tech technical skills into value. The following five projects all take this problem first approach. You can take these ideas and implement them directly, or even better, use them as inspiration for solving a problem that you face personally. An effective yet time-consuming part of applying to jobs is adapting your resume to different job descriptions. While automating this process would have been a pretty advanced project a few years ago, with today's large language models, this is a simple API call. Here's a step-by-step -step breakdown of how you can do this today. First, start by creating a markdown version of your resume. Note that this is something that ChatGPT can do for you. Second, go to ChatGPT and experiment with different prompt templates that take the markdown version of your resume and a job description and output a new resume in the markdown format. Third, move from ChatGPT to Python by using OpenAI's Python API to prompt GPT-40 Mini to dynamically rewrite your resume. And then fourth and finally, convert your markdown resume to PDF using the markdown and PDF kit Python libraries. While this is something we can readily use ChatGPT for, the upside of implementing this process in Python is that we can easily scale it up to hundreds of resumes. If you're having trouble getting started, I have some starter code freely available in the blog post linked in the description. I'm always eager to add new technical videos to my watch later playlist. However, I'm usually not as eager to actually watch them. So these videos tend to sit around for weeks weeks, if not months. A project that could help with this is a tool that watches the videos for me and generates concise summaries with key points. Here's one way to do that. First, given a YouTube video link, extract the video ID using regular expressions. Second, use the video ID to extract the transcript via the YouTube Transcript API Python library. Third, experiment with different ChatGPT prompts that effectively summarize summarize the transcript. And then fourth, automate this whole process by using OpenAI's Python library. From a technical perspective, this is very similar to the first project. A key difference, however, is that we will need to automatically extract video transcripts and feed them to a large language model. If you want to see how to do this, check out the example code in the blog post. My watch later is not the only place I hoard technical information. Another cache is my desktop, which is riddled with hundreds of unread research papers. Since manually reviewing these papers would be very time consuming, let's see how AI can help. We can use text embeddings to translate each paper into a dense vector representation, with which similar articles can be clustered together using a traditional machine learning algorithm like k-means. Here's a more detailed breakdown. First, read the abstract from each research article using the PyMu PDF Python library. Next, use the sentence transformers library to convert these abstracts into text embeddings and store them in a pandas data frame. Third, use your favorite clustering algorithm from sklearn to group the embeddings based on similarity. Then fourth and finally, create folders for each cluster and move each file into the appropriate folder. The key step for this project is generating the text embeddings, which I talked more about in this video. There I talk about what they are and share example code for using them. A couple of months ago, I helped a company design a basic RAG system 
system to search over a set of technical reports. A key challenge with searching over reports like this is that key information is often represented in plots and figures as opposed to text. One way we can incorporate this visual information into the search process is using a multimodal embedding model, which can represent text and images in the same embedding space. Here are the basic building blocks for that. First, given a PDF, chunk it into sections and extract the images using PyMu PDF. Second, use a multimodal embedding model to represent chunks and images as dense vectors. You can find such a model on the Hugging Face Hub and access it using the Transformers Python library. Third, repeat this process for all PDFs in the knowledge base. Fourth, given a user query, pass it through the same embedding model used for the knowledge base. Fifth, compute the cosine similarity between the query embedding and every item in in the knowledge base using sklearn. The sixth and final step is to return the top k most similar items as search results. The most important step of this project is how the PDFs are chunked. The simplest way to do this is to use a fixed character count with some overlap for each chunk. It's also helpful to capture metadata such as file name and page number for each chunk and image. I share some basic boilerplate code for doing this in the blog post for this video. Over the past year, I've helped about 100 businesses and individuals build their AI projects. By far, the most common project people ask for is a knowledge base question answering system. This is something we can build in a straightforward way, building on top of the previous project. Given our documents are already chunked and stored in a database, we can convert the multimodal search tool into a multimodal RAG system. First, perform a search over the knowledge base, just like we did in project number four. Second, combine the user query with the top K search results and pass them to a multimodal model. This can be something like GPT-40 or Llama 3.2 Vision. Third, create a simple Gradio user interface for the question answering system. This project essentially combines projects two and four. However, it includes the essential component of a user interface. For that, we can use a dashboarding tool like Gradio, which allows us to create a chat UI with just a few lines of code. Okay, we covered a lot here, so I wanted to close with two key takeaways. The first is to start with the problem, not the technology. Solving problems puts your effort into a larger context and is ultimately what generates value. Second is to use tools like ChatGPT and Cursor to help you be a more productive programmer. Issues that used to block me for hours, if not days, a few years ago can now be resolved in minutes. Using coding assistance is the new norm in programming. So I encourage you to use these tools to help you learn faster and build bolder projects. If you have questions on any of these project ideas, let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.